let's just run through what's happening then with WLANs where we've hidden the SSID. Let's begin with creating a new SSID on the access point and by default we see that the SSID is not hidden. That means the access point will broadcast beacons containing the SSID and this will be readable by all clients in the area that can receive the beacon. Let's look at what's in the beacon. First of all we can see that this is a beacon frame and that the SSID is broadcast in the SSID field. When stations are listening to beacons in this way, we call it passive scanning. Active scanning, on the other hand, is when the client station actively wants to find access points, and it does this by sending a frame called a probe request. Because the clients are trying to find any access points that are in the area, the probe request doesn't contain the SSID. This is a broadcast probe request. Any access point that receives it should respond, and the probe response will contain the SSID of the WLAN. Let's look at the frames. So the probe request is sent by the client. This is a probe request frame. We can see that it's a probe request. And if we look under the SSID field, we can see that there is no SSID. The field is null, which means that the client is asking for any access point to respond. The access point here in our example, here's the probe request and sends back a probe response. We can see in the probe response that the SSID is listed here as WLAN1. Now we'll enable hiding the SSID in beacon broadcasting and let's have a look at what happens. Well the access point will now broadcast its beacon but the SSID field will be empty. Even though the WLAN has an SSID it just won't be visible in the beacon. Client stations will still hear the beacon. Let's have a look at the frame. Here is a beacon frame and we see now the SSID field is empty. So now the client station will send his probe request and the SSID field will be null because the station is trying to find all access points. Let's have a look. There we see in the probe request a null SSID. When the access point receives this, it'll simply just not respond. Let's have a look from the iPhone's perspective. Here we see that the iPhone Wi-Fi is enabled. In this state, it's not connected to any WLANs at all, so it is probing, and it's received a probe response from the network that's called CASA. But that's not in our network, that's just a neighboring access point that's responding to a null probe request. But our network, our WLAN 1, which is a hidden SSID, is not visible. We can't see it. And the reason is because the access point isn't responding to the null probe requests. So in order to get the client device to connect to the access point, we have to configure it so that it sends out a probe request that contains the SSID. In this case, WLAN 1, that's our test WLAN. When this is done, the access point will respond with the probe response that does contain the SSID. And the device will then go through the authentication and association. Let's have a look. So as we can see, I can't actually see WLAN 1, but I can configure a manual connection to it. So let's try that. WLAN 1. There is no security on this, just to make the demonstration simple. I'll click join, and there we go. We're now connected to WLAN 1, but we weren't able to see it. And that's the important thing with the hidden SSID. If we know the SSID, then we can manually configure a connection, and we will connect. Let's just check the frames. Here is the probe request, and we can clearly see that the SSID now is listed in the probe request. And we can also see the response from the access point also containing the SSID. So we can clearly see by knowing the SSID, it's possible to configure a connection up to the access point. Also note that the association request contains the SSID too, although the association response doesn't. Let's just have a quick look at an association request frame. Just to confirm then, here is an association request frame and we can clearly see the SSID is listed here. So what does this mean? It means that hiding the SSID will stop devices from casually being able to identify your WLAN, but anybody with any kind of frame capture software will be able to intercept frames and identify the WLAN, so it's not a true security solution. SSID hiding is usually used with some other authentication methods. It does add an extra layer of security, but as we can see, the SSID can be easily identified with the right tools.